Hello. This video is about me reflecting on my scattered notes that I wrote concerning that video discussion with Heidi Preeb, with uh, Christian Rivera and Denzel Mensa on Men Are Trash. And there are multiple things to cover. Like, I feel like I have to write the notes scattered because that's what this topic or lots of these complex topics do to me. There's no clear system to apply to them. They're like non-linear to me. They're very complex too. So it's like to like hit on multiple points, you have to go almost all over the place because they're like different branches. It becomes like rhizomatic where it's omnidirectionally spreading out in different places. There are certain things that are connecting, certain things that are disconnecting. And it just becomes fundamentally about life and being a person. I guess the first thing I have to say is what in relation to men are trash. I am, I guess I think of it like this. Suppose uh, another alien species or something, like creatures from another planet came to visit and live with us. And maybe they were stronger than us or maybe they were weaker than us or whatever. And we had different worlds of relationships with them where we either exploited them or they exploited us and so on. And then they characterize us as trash depending on their mode of relationship with us and the kind of experiences they've had. I don't think we'd appreciate that because we're being depreciated. And we feel like we're being summed up in all our totality and all our complexity in line of just our shortcomings in the relationship. I don't think, I feel like on one hand, we are shaped by our relationships, and we are reflected by our relationships. But I don't think we are totalized by our, by our relationships. So I don't think our mode of relations fully characterize us. Nor do I think our like like it's very complex. It's very like it goes into the kind of values that you have and how you characterize people, and where you establish uh, formation when it comes to people. What, as far as what forms them and what you're taking into account. Like, personally, like, I don't feel like life is any difficult or easier for me as a man or because I'm a man. I feel like life is difficult and easy because I'm a person. There are things that come about with my totality that I don't look at with all the social categories or all the social perceptions that I get from this culture. And I feel like in some sense, I have my foot and I have myself within different realms. Where on one hand, I participate within the cultural matrix and how the culture perceives certain things. And I even play to it sometimes. Like I'll say things and directly to tease out people's prejudices or people's unspoken emotions or people's unspoken algorithms for how they reason or people's background experiences or background did wishes and hopes and fears and uncertainties and so on just to get at all the stuff that's hidden with people that's usually what i want to get at because i feel like that's when you can actually have an honest connection with people and that's when you can have a true revelation on the topic and i feel like men are trash does not really reveal how women actually feel about men i don't feel it fully addresses how women fully experience men I don't think it fully addresses how men experience men or how men feel about men and so on. I feel like it's just a depreciation and it's a venting of a general frustration, uh, like having a particular target for some area in your life or some area in your personhood, some area in your constitution or interactions and relations not going well that you can characterize as, I guess, bad you can characterize as sucky like there's a sort of misanthropy that pe lots of people have in the concrete even if in the abstract they'll promote peace and love and wish for a better world and whatnot which is which to me it creates a tension it's not so much hypocrisy but it creates a tension because you can only have that concrete love by actually orienting yourself in a concrete and loving way towards other people and then understanding what this love character was, this love is characterized by, what this piece is characterized by, and so on. And I feel like lots of people have on on thought of ways, like ways, thoughtless ways when it comes to 
love and peace and it comes to happiness and a good life and so on. And it's not so, and they only know it's so much it's more so they know what they don't want or what they dislike, but they don't actually know what they do want and what they actually do like. And they don't know what is healthy and how things actually go well and what allows things to flourish and develop. They have heuristics that they can go off of, or they have insights that they gather from different places, but they don't have a fundamental or even a systemic understanding or a sense of understanding of the different uh, features that characterize life or the different dimensions that make a situation what it is. And this is to say, like, I experienced this too, where like there's this girl who I was I'm a part of a group and I confessed that I to myself that I really don't like her. And there are multiple reasons why I don't like her, aside from her not being a good thinker, us not sharing the same values and all these different things. And and I was just like, Well, I want to be able to love her. So I was just like, okay, I'll think of her as my sister. I'll call her my sister. I'll put sister, so on, whatever I refer to her. And by framing it that way, since I do love my sisters, I was able to like associate the love I have for them with her. And then I was like, well, what if I didn't have sisters? How would I be able to love her? And so on. Or I can say friends. Like if I didn't have a friendship, if I didn't have a model of a good relationship, then how would I be able to love her? And I feel like even if we're not exposed to love in life, we can have a sense of how the hatred or the abuse we may experience or the hatred or the abuse we may observe or imitate is not productive or is not healthy and is not beneficial. So we can counter it by doing the opposite, by seeking what counters this or what heals us. And I feel like this should be the attitude that people should take towards things. Like sometimes I experience misanthropy where I'm just like, people are so stupid and people suck. And I wish people would stop reproducing. Like I used to be an anti-natalist where I was like, I'm definitely not getting married and I'm definitely not having kids because I don't want to bring another person to a world like this. And I don't want to continue this nonsense. And I wish people would just stop reproducing and causing the same old drama, the same old cycles and the same old wishes for perfection when there's no perfection in sight and perfection is not possible in this world and that that's the imperfections the dynamism the asymmetries the struggle that actually characterizes some of our deepest and greatest pleasures and greatest achievements and some of our greatest developments there's a sense of uh inviting suffering so you can be okay with it so you can develop with it. so you can develop with it and it's just these issues fundamentally tackle life they fundamentally tackle what does it mean to be human how do you want to relate to other people what do you want about out of your life what do you want out of yourself and i know out of myself i want to be able to love life i want to be able to accept the good and the bad and to orient myself mainly towards the good and help the good unfold more and encourage that and put out more good than bad and transform bad things into good things shape configurations of bad into good shape my different schemas and shape my different frames and my different sense of genre and my different sense of perceptions and so on into a way that allows me to interface and put with the world and other people in a way that will, if not benefit them, then or improve them, then at least prevent things from getting worse or not impede them, not to get in their way, not like the prior principle of basically do no harm unless it's necessary or something, like if you're doing surgery or something like that. There's no, it's very hard to apply uh, a universal rule as to how people should be with lots of things or a rather a fixed rule. I think that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. You can't like, there are different contexts that invite a different stylization of or a different manner of uh, behaving or attending or characterizing or rendering or interpreting and so on. And this makes life very hard to like talk about. And this makes this topic very difficult to talk about. Because right now I'm being abstract, but I can get into specifics. And but each specific specific requires its own, I feel like detailed and big picture and synergistic and subsendent 
and transcendent, all these different, uh, I don't know what to call them. I'll just call them categories, these different categories of addressing them to like put them into perspective as far as our sense of what is purposeful, what is beneficial, what is healthy, what is optimal, what is suitable. Because like if we're honest, like we don't love, we may hate evil, but we don't love good. We may hate bad things that happen to us, but we don't love like, we don't love what is good for us, and sometimes we can be self-destructive and mindless and stupid, and, like, if we're very honest with ourselves, we notice this stuff, and we can also be very, very lazy, intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and so on, morally, and stuff like that. We don't strive, we don't push ourselves, we don't challenge ourselves, like, there are lots of people who speak of improvement to work improve in some areas but not in other areas or they're blindsided in some ways like they have blind spots to how they can improve and so on so it's just with if we have a bunch of blind like if you aggregate less into like a structure or something and some parts of the structure have a blind side and you get attacked then you basically will be hit by the unexpected you'll be hit by the non-linear and or if you think of it as something more constructive, like like in choir, I remember my choir teacher, Ernest Johnson, he's a great man. He used to always say like choir, like music is one of the main arts where you can't make a lot of mistakes, if any. And it's because like if everyone is singing in the choir and everyone decides to miss just one note at a random time, the thing will the song will sound bad. So that's also a way that some situations can be characterized. Some situations can be characterized as a choir. Some situations can be characterized as just an ambience. Some situations can be characterized as just a wasting, a throwing away, or a, destru a destruction, like a forest fire that's clearing certain plants out of the way so new plants can grow and so on and shade the smaller plants beneath them so that they can develop. So it's just... There are different metaphors for this, but it's like, I feel like you have to use every single process as a metaphor for itself and investigate what constitutes it and what makes it do what it does and what allows it to unfold the way it's unfolding. You have to let the process have its full performance. And I feel like people don't do this so they don't get a keen insight and understanding and a keen sense of mechanics and a keen sense of how to plan and interact and interface, and to manage, and to maintain, and to develop, and all the different things that are required for a situation to go well, or for a situation to unfold. This, and I know I'm, I said I'm talking about men are trash, but I feel like for every, any one of these topics, we're always talking about life, and I feel like uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's tough, it's difficult. Like, women don't want men to be trash. They, no one wants to deal with a trashy person. <clears throat> no one wants to deal with the trashy self. No one wants to be viewed as trash. Nobody wants to be judged as trash, and so on. So that's why I posit love. Like, that's why I bring up love and how, like, and encourage us to strive to love and strive to love what is right. And even while I say this, there are certain things I do wrong. And like sometimes I'll notice in myself, and I notice in other people too, when I can read, when I have my theory of mind working or I have intentionality, not intentionality, but intentionality with an S. And which is sort of like, I think, you think, I think, and I think, you think, I think, you think, I think, and so on. Like you can have these, it can also become it can almost become recursive where you you're you're you want somebody or where both both of you are thinking the other person thinks about your thinking and so on, and so when I'm aware of these things, I notice manipulative programs in myself and manipulative programs in other people, ways in which people try to like get their reward get rewards or satisfactions, whether it's sexual or emotional or social, or physical, like just. I guess you can say if you want to characterize life with some aphorism as far as how we pursue things as we're pursuing rewards 
or pursuing satisfactions or pursuing a type of good and so on. This is all very Plato was also hit on this. I haven't read much Plato, but I know this is some of the stuff that he was talking about. And this is some things that people talk about in high philosophy where all wrongs are an attempt to aim at a good or aim at a lower good or aim at a, a good, not in its proper context or in its proper position or at its proper time and so on or at its at its or with its nature if it's not a matter of proportion if it's not a matter of structure if it's not a matter of mere relation it's a matter of whatever it actually is and it's as itself and so on so like i'll notice in myself sometimes i'll be talking to somebody like and i'll be flirting with them because a part of me wants to sleep with them but then a part of me does not want to sleep with them because i'm very thoughtful about that for my own reasons i'll share it later so I'll be become aware of this and I'm just like, what am I doing? So now I'll back off or I'll be honest with them about what's going on with me to like cancel it out. And sometimes I'll try to, as a result, since I am this honest with people, I tend to try to create a circumstance so other people will be honest with me about how they are, how they are about the worst things about themselves or their own manipulative or predatory or pretentious or shady or cowardly or weak and so on dimensions to themselves and i feel like i feel like i wish we lived in a society where people could be not so much vulnerable i guess vulnerability is a part of it, but i want people to be honest at the end of the day there's a sense of like i rather ex i'd accept a uh and i'd accept an evil person who was honest about their evil than uh average person who is dishon who is dishonest about their virtue and that's this is how i am towards things i'm not sure whether you can characterize that as best or healthy or whatever but it's just how i approach things that's my main preference and that's how i approach things so as a result based on this this is how i relate to people and i tend to just want to encourage people to uh want to be honest basically be honest about your hurts. Be honest about your wishes. Be honest about your pride. Be honest about your fake humility. Be honest about your weakness. Be honest about your pretensions. Be honest about your in inadequacies and so on. Because I just see a lot of complexity constantly. And it's complexity that's not fully fleshed out, that's not fully explored. And I think it's not, it's, it can't be because people aren't honest about what they're, what's going on with them and they don't know how to categorize and like, they basically do what I'm doing right now where they just try to express their feelings as thoughts and their thoughts as feelings. But I feel like you should be aware that your feelings are not your thoughts and your thoughts are not your feelings and your thoughts can mischaracterize the world and your feelings can Miss motivate you or demotivate you from things that you can or can't do or you can or shouldn't do rather and so on and it's just there's lots lots of fallacies that go on and it's just it's difficult but i guess maybe i should focus in more on the topic again and go back to men are trash but i feel like i've covered the best i want to say about it i guess as a person, I haven't been a very quality person. I've been a horrible person in different ways in my life. And, but even though I've been a horrible person, I wouldn't say I'm good, but I wouldn't say I'm bad either. I would say I'm human. That's the best way I could characterize myself. And that's how I see most people. Like, they're, and it's like acknowledging this sense of the different variations that come with people the different dimensions that come with people, like the domains that comprise them and the different valence they can fall on across the spectrum, so to speak, and the different levels they can go to as far as, I guess, nobility or or actualization or uh, self-transcendence or serving others or serving, uh, I guess, a god or something or serving you know how, what lets reality run as it's going and like unfolding their purpose unfolding the kind of person that they can become 
<laughs> the kind of genre that they live in. Like, it's just, when I take this into account, this is usually what gives me hope. And all I'm expressing right now is just to present my sense of the world, my sense of life, present my sense of experience for other people so they can do with it what they want to share with me their own so we can interact. And I feel like that's what we need to do at a fundamental level. We need to get at how do we experience ourselves? How do we experience reality? What, how do we characterize things? And I don't, and I, I feel like that's one of the reasons why I go so much to police, but I'll address that into another, in another video about my sense of matrices and beliefs and so on. But I think I've said everything I could possibly think to say. So I appreciate you listening and please share your thoughts, share with me what you think. Am I on the right track? Am I on the wrong track? Have I missed some things? Like, should I not be worried about the depreciation that comes with being called trash? Or, because it's not a generalization that gets me, because it's like, even if men were trash, it's like, what does that do? Does that improve them? Not really. It just vents your own emotion. And if men did not care, then yeah, you're just kind of stuck with that. You see what I mean? So it's like, it has to, there's a sense of, for it to be, it almost has to hurt men hurt men enough for them to change or want to change or hurt them enough for them to reflect and stuff like that or it has to catalyze them in that way because something can hurt you but not change you or it can change you for the worse or it can make you avoidant or demotivate you and so on so it's just i feel like people need to interface better and formulate their modes of relationships better and negotiate their existence with other people better irrespective to the kind of whatever social structures or social systems or the ways that they characterize these things, whether they're blaming the devil or blaming the patriarchy or blaming gynocentrism, centricism, I think that's what it's called, or whatever it is that they take to characterize reality as being the case for what's going on. I personally don't adhere to any of these things because I feel like I like to get into the details and into, like, I like to look at things micro and macro, basically. I like to look at things moving and still, like, just to get all the different potential, all the different potentials, all the different possibilities, all the different, because I feel like that renders to me a fuller picture of reality. I try to get as close to exhaustion as possible, trying to exhaust reality as much as possible, trying to exhaust the topic as much as possible. So I can feel like uh, what I'm interacting with is well vetted, is well understood, is well aligned with, is well attuned, attuned with, as well synthesized with, well integrated with, well dis disconnected where connections don't need to be connected, uh, non attached where non attachment is fruitful or needed, and so on. So, yeah. There's more I can say, but I'll probably address it in other videos. I'll just leave it here. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.